all the questions to the speaker. And also, let me remind you kindly that we will have more time for interactive and networking events. So please pay attention to the agenda which you received at the registration desk. So now checking our clocks, right? I'm sure that by lunchtime, we shall get our time in right. At least we'll do as much as possible to catch up on time. And with that, I have the pleasure of inviting to the station and also to hand over the lion's share of moderating responsibilities to the representatives of our panel number one dedicated to combat medicine. So please welcome Professor Dr. Medical Sciences Mikhailo Baduk. Please welcome. will be moderating the panel number one. Uh, so please get ready with your questions. And now over to you, dear sir. Dear friends, first of all, I would like to to go to say thank you for your being here on the International Summit of uh, Healthcare in Ukraine. Uh, uh, e and as a matter of fact, well, we, uh, we all of you know that you have a, uh, a war in Ukraine. Uh, he, uh, as, you, as you probably know, the uh, statement from the uh, Otto Bismarck that uh, there is not a uh, general who uh, won the uh, victory, but, uh, but uh, school teachers who did that. But one of the medical uh, doctors, uh, he changed the statement that, that uh, severe war won not generals but uh, but wounded person, and uh, exactly the uh, wounded who are uh, who are, have to be uh, uh, reinforced, and that is why it's so it's so important for uh, for our wounded to restore their health. And it is really important to say that not only the medical of, of Ukraine uh, uh, participated in this, and uh, all the progressive uh, doc, uh, participants and all the doctors from all the world. And uh, now we have Roxana and Horbova, uh, who is a surgeon, emergency uh, surgeon, who is head of NAEMT. And he also uh, the uh, teacher of Международной Ассоциации Натальи Допомоги и с этим проектом NNT Панан Роксала на працює work from the 2016 till to know and uh, due to her health uh, approximately. Uh, uh, the, uh, many decades were opened up, and we uh, uh, learned a lot of instructors who provided the <coughs> uh, special uh, education um, for our doctors and ATLS. He stopped the stopped the 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 represent here in the United States of America. I actually, he supposed to provide your lecture using Zoom platform. We have to understand from our technician program how how could we connect with, uh, with our speaker? We completely hear you, and it's great. And we're absolutely sure that we will have a complete opportunity to see you as well. Great thanks to you. I want to have to change a little bit. You can provide your speech where I listen to you attentively and you can speak where and you can speak 
uh, we and we have to understand how could we adapt uh, the uh, sound according to your song, your speech. Pani Roxan, uh, are you with us? Thank you. Yeah, I will provide my speech in Ukrainian. Uh, yeah, I can uh, hear myself and I can hear the interpreter. I don't know how could we manage this problem. I could we fix it. But I'm glad to to be here and I'm glad to hear an interpreter is now here. And let me provide our film topic. It's, uh, this is a start and uh, development of national academic uh, emergency medical techniques in Ukraine. І що ми, які вроки ми, what lessons we have learned. And I really appreciate the invitation and to the Professor Baduk, especially for his support and uh, in the relationship and, uh, with him. And a great uh, experience to uh, have a patient for me. Yeah, my, uh, I have to say that all of these thoughts and this speech are completely uh, mine and I have uh, any uh, financial relationship. Uh, even bear in mind there is a lot of people who are responsible for, for the help and support. And one of them uh, you can see on this slide and a lot of them uh, uh, you are heard about them and you have to sub, uh, emphasize that uh, interrelationship and to work, co-working with them uh, and uh, constant wish to be better. This is uh, very important and we know for that in Ukraine this is very natural to uh, to accept the people, and that is why it's a great pleasure uh, to work with the all Ukrainian in, in your country. And I always uh, said that, uh, that that I, I also uh, that I was born in the United States. Uh, let me give the opportunity to uh, say a couple of words uh, about it, uh, about this uh, association. And this uh, association, I'm head of that in the United States. And then I would like to provide uh, about the, our knowledge about the uh, origin and our development uh, in order to provide the whole Ukraine system to provide the standardized uh, courses and high quality courses uh, that were work out and by the national uh, association of uh, medical health and medical academy of uh, surgeons and also would provide uh, how could we adapt uh, with our courses uh, during the pandemic in order to, uh, to, uh, to avoid a big pause in, in our courses. And uh, what we did uh, from the very beginning and uh, how could we start from the beginning of the Russian invasion? And so, таким чином, хочу підкреслити, що Всесвітня організація медичних товариств України, вона була започаткована в 2000 році, і вона є цією є медикальна медична освіта, надання навчальних послуг та 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 різноманітні наукові проекти. Він є представником в різних странах України. And we registered in the, in the, in the USA, and we different. And the, the main events that we provided и uh, организации основали в цей час. И we provided a, a great um, uh, network of the of the doctors in order to uh, provide the help uh, uh, for development uh, and communication 
uh, the remote uh, dog, um, controls and we have started that Uh, the place where uh, really uh, really close to the Berezhan, uh, Tenopol city. Uh, this is when uh, uh, there was the meeting among the doctors, and uh, this is actually the international event and uh, with academic goals, uh, and we we tried to involve uh, the uh, remote. Uh, uh, city, uh, city uh, hospitals and uh, scientific doctors. Uh, from, from the uh, beginning of the uh, 20, 14 years uh, that were uh, devoted to the uh, treatment of wounded people, and in the surgical materials we observed a great uh, changes uh, in the healthcare system in Ukraine, and we started. Uh, uh, this uh, event and to target our uh, education program and help and help to uh, to this uh, system. Uh, and we provided uh, uh, um, humanitarian aid and we uh, keep providing it uh, till this end. Uh, in 2014. What uh, our our target was to provide a, a very important uh, and well-known course, advanced travel and support in Ukraine. Uh, I'm a surgeon, uh, general surgeon, and emergency uh, surgery. So that is why uh, this course. This is my life actually, and and I would like to. Uh, to provide this course for Ukrainian people as well. And uh, we were able uh, from 2014 to invite six uh, traumatologists from the different uh, part of Ukraine. And one of my colleagues uh, gave, us, gave us the support uh, to make uh, possible to provide this course and, and after that American uh, Academy of Surgeon uh, uh, to start the providing uh, this course in Ukraine and the first course was in, uh, in, in February of 2014 but we know that uh, December 2013 and uh, with, uh, the a, a great event started, and and uh, uh, unfortunately we have the opportunity to provide this, and it was delayed. Um, but but we still have hope uh, to provide the uh, courses. But uh, but unfortunately, you know all this history and uh, what what has happened and then bust and spreading uh, all over the Ukraine and and we and we had to change our way and our path and in the in the march of the same year uh, 2014 uh, he, uh, we invited uh, the professor uh, uh, and he is actually uh, the father uh, of the of the ATLS and and two months after after our meeting, we've got an opportunity to invite uh, 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 twelve uh, surgeons from the different parts of Ukraine, uh, uh, including uh, where the well, some people from here from uh, Donetsk and uh, from Chernihiv and from the V region and different cities of Ukraine on this course uh, pre hospital care uh, who is uh, the professor next week provided and founded it and uh, to provide uh, this course for to our surgeons and as well uh, we have to spread uh, this course in ukraine and uh, we get ready uh, to this course uh, from the October uh, 2014, uh, 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 and we use 
the, the help of a professor. And you, you can see him. And we were invited to, uh, to provide education of uh, TCC, so uh, technical, uh, technical uh, care. And uh, we have started it in uh, German. Uh, we have uh, four uh, daughters from Ukraine who were invited. And I was invited to, to this course as well. And uh, you can see our uh, doctors of our uh, group. And after that, we've got uh, the planet opportunity to start uh, this course on the same year. And we started this first year in Lviv, in the hospital, Lviv, in the military hospital. And we got an uh, opportunity to start this course uh, pre hospital uh, and Trina in the October of 2014 was well accepted. Uh, and it was decided by Ukrainian to provide this uh, these courses. And in October 2015, we provided the first course uh, to educate uh, further uh, teachers. And we have uh, registered and uh, certified these courses uh, for the uh, care of wounded uh, warriors. And you can see how we uh, work with our surgeons in the Lviv. And we some have uh, some uh, some great events, and to provide uh, for our uh, doctors and um, and also the uh, we have the opportunity to uh, to provide the special education for our teachers and supervisors for these courses. And we provide the awarding for uh, for, uh, for these courses and uh, from the, uh, uh, the for defense minister of defense for this uh, personnel. Uh, we've got some uh, goals uh, for this uh, education program and for spreading of these courses in Ukraine. Uh, and to develop uh, this program uh, from 2014 uh, to provide the high quality uh, education uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, uh, for, for the American uh, Surgical Academy. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, we would like to invite uh, the combat uh, surgeon and anesthesiologist uh, to provide uh, the high level of, of knowledge, and uh, in order to they uh, could provide this uh, uh, this courses for uh, uh, for our for other students within Ukrainian language, because one of the uh, main basement uh, for spreading uh, uh what we have to do uh, just to bleeding. Uh, but we have the practice as well, but, uh, because we have to understand how could we do that, and we have to provide the skills, uh, in order, and we have to be adapted for our environment, uh, you know, for our cities, uh, for our um, uh, characteristic of environment as well. And so, uh, first of all, we, uh, we would like to provide uh, all the uh, facilities that needed <coughs> to these courses. And our, our, uh, uh, in order to our military doctors, the, I mean Ukrainian uh, military hospitals, in order that they have uh, the appropriate level uh, of education, I mean the, uh, the military surgeons, but anesthesiologists, uh, in order they, uh, to be an instructor. Uh, and that is why we invite uh, to participate in this because of different. Uh, different uh, people and different uh, uh, and the main idea uh, that they have to have a wish uh, to be practiced on this course and, and so we try to uh, to provide our uh, 
our attempt to understand what is the best appropriate, what is the best fit to uh, for him and to provide um, uh, many different courses uh, with, uh, in, order, uh, in order to solve this problem and to, uh, to obtain uh, the uh, life support uh, for wounded uh, people, for wounded uh, warriors and uh, that time we have on, on the two levels but uh, last year we have three levels and uh, only for uh, them uh, for paramedical personnel and for the, uh, the, the for the other combatants and uh, the course that we provided uh, it the uh, in, in a different uh, uh, studio environment and we also founded workout uh, tactical a uh, course for uh, tactical uh, for uh, wounded civilian and uh, it the name is TECC uh, it, it, it got uh, easy to uh, uh, to reach it also we had a separate course which was developed for law enforcement representatives we have also implemented this course, and also we had a separate NMT instructor course, which was implemented looking from the American College of Surgeon point of view. We did not have an opportunity to implement ATLS, but we still invited some of the representatives of uh, healthcare professionals to, for them to get this course in army in the other territories, but we have implemented other courses which are represented by the American College of Surgeons. And this is the course which is named Bleeding Control, which have started with NNT, but then right now it is uh, managed by the American College of Surgeons. Previously it was the NAMT course, also the course Stop the Bleed, and we had an opportunity last year when when there was a full-scale invasion of Russians, to have also the tactical usage of this course. So, the course which we provide is actually used in tactical conditions as well. Also, there were two other courses which we have implemented, and we have evaluated whether there is a need to implement them, and we have implemented them. That was the two courses, the Rural Trauma Team Development Course, RTTDC, that's a one-day course, and also Trauma Evaluation and Management Team Course, which was provided by the ACS. So we have worked in, uh, in uh, big cities and also the remote places, in hospitals and clinics, on the emergency ambulance stations as well, and we have worked in the colleges. We had an opportunity to work in the places which were located in some stationary mirror, and also everything was available in those stationary places, equipment, uh, rooms, uh, but also we had an idea to have a mobile courses when we were Waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning in Lviv, we were using our transport vehicle and we were traveling in some remote places. And then we had the course in that remote places. And after that, we were gathering and traveling back in the same day or in a couple of days and got back to the place where we were staying. I have already mentioned that we had courses for military and for citizens and for civilians. So they were involved in different activities. And we tried to prepare them and to provide the needed courses for them. You know, they also for us to understand whether there is an interest, whether there is a willing, and what are the needs. When COVID appeared, we had this unique opportunity to develop the courses 
remotely. We were using Zoom as most of the world were using. So many people were using Zoom at that moment of time during the COVID-19. We also have started to use it. Uh, that was extremely interesting. And uh, we still continue to conduct the quality courses. So there was uh, by the American College of Surgeon a rather simple model which was developed. That was a course which was dedicated which was used uh, about the remote warning of how to stop the bleeding and hemorrhages, hemorrhage management. And we had those great opportunities to develop it even further and to implement these uh, courses on hemorrhage control model. And also what we did, we have this extreme and great uh, trainers, extraordinary trainers, and uh, those trainers have the possibility to communicate in one by one manner to get through this course and to take a look into this precise manner, how to perform the needed skills and in different scenarios. And uh, we use this kind of model, which is called cat croaking model in order to stop the bleeding and not just uh, to sh to tell but also to show and also to see what is being done and we have a huge and a great positive positive yeah so we have some positive feedback regarding this uh, course and uh, position in of our course and it reinforces our capabilities and skills of our trainees. For those who are right now seeing this in this audience, in this summit, and uh, who was participating in the previous courses, I would like to thank you for this, and I also would like to thank you for the participating further on in the courses. You know that uh, there was a sudden situation which appeared and we needed to act immediately and that's how we started to act in 2022. So you may see the invasion which was happening, this is the map which you observe quite often. You know, it uh, reminds me about a lot of people about everybody who have shown it. It reminds about the huge challenge which appeared in Ukraine in 2022. And this is just a small fragment, a small piece. You may take a look over here. The whole part of Ukraine, the whole, the whole, the whole scale invasion and you may see that red over here and this red over here part on the map is bigger in its square meters than Italy for example or some other countries and I think that this is extremely important for us to remember about it and more and more respect the armed forces of Ukraine for fighting in this situation in order to stop that invasion and right now to to, to stop it and to even push it outside of the territories of Ukraine and without any doubts I know with great confidence that the armed forces of Ukraine are going to do it in a good and resilient manner. Let's take a look over here. Right now you may see the situation, how huge of a wound that was for the country. And we had different new traumas and different view of injuries which we're observing. Right now on the left you see, for example, the phosphorus bumps. You may see those huge shrapnels, also some huge fires which were happening, damages of the building which were disrupted, and some other sources of trauma which might be happening, because uh, there are quite a lot of unauthorized or non-legal weapons which were used in this war setting and which were aimed towards the, our armed forces of Ukraine. So, from our point of view, what we try to do, we try to answer immediately. We try to have a rapid response. So, the World Federation of Ukrainian Medical Associations we have activated our network of the worldwide associations 
we had our trainees, we had uh, representatives of NAEMT, we were constantly connected with the Ukrainian Medical Military Academy, Ukrainian Military Medical Academy, UAMMA, and also with the American College of Surgeons, with the American Burn Associations, and also the U.S. Army Institute of Surgical Research with USASR. And we have, after that, determined the main needs which were there and what were our capabilities. And in four days after the first day of full-scale invasion, we have started the online training on tactical combat casualty care for all service members. Dear Oksalana, and at that moment of time, we have started immediately. Dear Oksana, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry for interrupting you. Sorry, we are sticking to agenda and we have a time and we kind of ask you to stop in a minute and we are going to give you the applause and to say thanks and we are going to communicate with you during the next International Med Healthcare Summit. Just a minute for you and we are going to thank you so much and we are going to move forward. So just a minute to finish your presentation. Yeah, thanks, thanks. Sorry for taking too much time. So on these slides you may see 7,000 military and civilian attendees which we were able to involve and engage into our courses. And after that we had an opportunity to have those cycles of courses. And also we were communicating and partnering with the Ukrainian Military Medical Academy. And we have identified why casualties and uh, mortalities happening, why there is a mortality rate. We know that Ukraine is uh, connected to have support. And the biggest reason for this was in the front line. And we have performed this survey. And we have, with this survey, identified those 12 main issues. And that's what I wanted to deliver to you in context of the frontline mortality. And also, I will be able to tell you about each one of this issue quite a lot. And also to show some of the devices which were developed in order to address each one of those issues. Yes, sure, we are going to listen to all of that information. And we are going to ask those questions. And we are going to ask those questions in offline during the next uh, International Healthcare Summit to you. So the question, the questions, and Mihaila tells me that we are going to have the questions during the next summit, and we are going to have around, just to give her a round of applause, she hears us, she's with us, and she has promised us that Roxelana is going to join us during the next international